Elvis had a temper. He had a bad temper. His mother had one. Uh, and I think he got that from her. But that's about the only quality that he got from her that wasn't good, because everything else about her was giving and warm and sharing and everything. But his temper was like a black cloud when it came in full blown, buddy. It was a category five tornado, okay? It just covered all the area around, the whole room, the whole atmosphere. And you didn't know until you knew who it was about that had got him that way, what thoughts, who he was thinking about that got him this or who had done something. You may have done something the night before or earlier that day that might have got him mad like this. So you didn't know and you really didn't feel a whole lot of relief when it wasn't even you that he was upset you st because it was still there. It was still there weighing down on you. You know, Elvis uh, was a pretty even-tempered guy, but when he did something flared up and got mad, he had a bad temper. There was no in-betweens. He was really the nicest guy in the world, and sometimes he would snap and just have a real bad temper, and, and it scared the hell out of you sometimes. There was one incident I remember uh, during the movie Wild in the Country. Uh, Christina Crawford, uh, Joan Crawford's daughter, was one of the co-stars in the movie. Well, we became friends. I invited her up to the house one evening uh, to uh, hang out, you know. Elvis knew who she was. So we're sitting there watching a little TV and sitting on the couch and Elvis would smoke a cigar once in a while. So he picked up a cigar to smoke, take a cigar. And I reached over and lit his cigar for him. And she pulled my hand away from him. I went to do it again and she pulled the cigar out of Elvis's mouth. She says, now you shouldn't have to light his cigar. And I say, hey, don't do that. So Elvis really got mad. He got up and he grabbed her by the hair and pulled her across the coffee table, which scared the hell out of me and everybody else and they were really in shock. And he said, get her out of here. Take her home. Well, I didn't know what to do. I mean, this is the first time this ever happened to, to me uh, around Elvis, the first time I saw his temper like that. So I took her home and uh, took her in the car and we were driving back. I says, what was all that about? She says, you have no idea. I don't believe that we should be waiting hand on foot on big stars just because they're a big star. She says, my mom, Joan Crawford, uh, was like that. Everybody had, had a weight on her hand and foot. And so she, she really, didn't care for that too much. And uh, so she was all upset about it. And she was upset because what Elvis, how Elvis talked her and told her to leave. Plus, she was on the movie. So we took her back. And the next day or two was, I think, uh, she sent a nice little letter to, over to Elvis and, uh, you know, apologized and uh, sent him a case of Pepsis because at that time, Joan Crawford owned a Pepsi Cola company. And uh, she apologized and said she was sorry and just something hit her wrong at the time. And that was uh, quite a wild experience for me. When Elvis got into a bad mood, it was like a huge black cloud that came over and he had a very quick temper. And he'd say things that you've never heard before in your life. He would string expletives together and make words that you've never, <laughs> never heard of. And he'd be mad, and, and but he'd stay mad for maybe 30 minutes and then it'd be over. If, if it was directed towards somebody, one of the guys or what have you, at the end of 30 minutes, he'd uh, be overly joyful with the guy. He fired us in mass 10 times. Every one of you guys, get the fuck out of here. Go on home. And this wouldn't we be in LA. One time, Billy got mad after Elvis did that. And he looked at me and he said, take me to the damn airport. I said, you sure? I said, you know he's gonna blow over. Take me to the airport. So Richard Davis and I took Billy to the airport, LA airport, and uh, his bag was put on a plane and I get a page in the airport. So I go get the page and it was Alan Fortas. He said, Elvis wants you to bring Billy back. So I went and told Billy. I said, hold on, Alan. I kept Alan on the phone. And Billy said, I'm not coming back unless he apologizes, which Elvis didn't like to do. And so I got back on the phone, I said, Alan, Billy, he said, let me let me speak to Billy. I said, sure. So Billy gets on the phone and he said, I don't want to talk to you, Alan. Because Alan was sitting right next to Elvis. He said, tell him if he wants me to come back, he needs to get on the phone and ask me to come back. Because Billy, especially when he was younger, he was stubborn as a mule. And so Elvis got on the phone and Billy said, look, am I hired or fired? 
you're hired, come on back. He said, well, if you're waiting for me to say I'm sorry, this is Billy, I'm not saying I'm sorry. You're gonna have to say you're sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. And he gave the phone back. He said, Elvis said it so quick. And he said, if I can't get my bag off the plane, I'm going to Memphis. So I ran to the gate and had Billy's baggage ticket and asked the guy, I said, are you guys known for fast service? He said, yeah. I said, well, see how fast he can get this bag off the plane, because the plane was supposed to be leaving. They went and got the bag. We came back. Elvis had gone to bed. He didn't want to face us. So the next morning, Billy and I were sitting in the den with Elvis while he was having his breakfast. And he said to Billy, uh, you thought you were smart out, didn't you? And Billy says, no, no, you know, you fired us. And Elvis looked at me and he said, where the hell did you think you were going? I said, I'm not staying around anywhere I'm not wanted. I'm not staying around anywhere I'm not wanted. So he mimicked me because it was all a joke to him. Then. I was at Graceland. I was living there right in the, within the first year and kind of this sensitive young guy. I didn't have a lot of hangups actually and hadn't seen Priscilla in a day or so or Elvis. And um, Priscilla came down the steps and she didn't look good, you know? I just assumed she was sick, you know? And uh, I said, well, you know, where have you been? And, and she said, oh, I've just been, you know, upstairs. And I said, are you feeling okay, you know? I don't know what the response was. It was, you know, just, yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for asking or something, you know? And I didn't know what was wrong. It was her and Elvis had been in a two-day fight. And when she went back upstairs, I could hear the lamps flying. Evidently what happened upstairs is they continued the argument and Priscilla said something to the effect, well, at least Jerry cares how I'm feeling. And that didn't go over very, very well. So the next day, we're watching a football game downstairs. And um, Elvis had never said a cross word to me in all the years that I had known him. And he really wanted to, and but he, he, was, he didn't direct it at me, but as soon as it started, and it was like, I don't need anybody looking out for, if I need, if somebody's gonna take care of Priscilla, it's me, I don't need you guys asking her how she feels. And man, I was crushed. I was crushed. And um, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to pack my bags. You know, this was the fear of like, being misinterpreted as somebody that would hit on somebody's girlfriend or something like that. And how do you explain it? And he hasn't even directed it to me. I was crushed and I think he knew that. But you know, Elvis was so sensitive. I can't remember what he did, but it was very shortly where he kind of gave me a wink. And then he said, Jerry, let's go for a ride. He never mentioned it again. And I felt like a million dollars again, you know? <laughs>